Okay, so after rebuilding a uh, carburetor on my boat, um, the first one I rebuilt was pretty bad and it didn't run at all. So I decided that uh, this one, although the engine does run, but uh, it's been sitting just as long as the other one, I decided to go ahead and uh, purchase a rebuild kit. Um, I picked this one up from uh, Norfolk Marine and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a little film here on uh, how to rebuild these things. This is just a basic rebuild. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, p putting new jets in. Uh, I'm just going to use this kit. I did go ahead and purchase a new float kit. Um, um, and that's about it. So basically I'm just using uh, basic hand tools here. Um, my uh, carburetor does take the uh, torque style bits as you can see um, the whole carburetor is pretty much put together like that there is uh, a couple of uh, I think there's one or two Phillips screwdriver or Phillips bits in there that I'm going to be using um, this carburetor is off a uh, 1987 uh, C-Ray it's uh, got the Mercruiser 260's a small block Chevy um, to find my uh, parts re or my carb rebuild kit, I just went ahead and uh, wrote this number down. And I took it over to my uh, to Norfolk Marine, and they were able to pull up the correct kit. Also, um, this number back here on the side of the carb, this will come into play uh, when we get into the uh, rebuild kit. It uh, it has a list of uh, you know the carburetor numbers to get the uh, correct adjustments of the uh, float height and, and stuff like that so I'm going to start by uh, just pretty much tearing it down uh, cleaning it I have a carburetor I'm just using basic stuff I got some gum out carb cleaner I do have some uh, carburetor dip um, it's outside my garage though I'll be showing you that and uh, just showing you what to look for and, and how to put one of these back together, take it apart and put it back together and get it to work. Go ahead and uh, I, I like to take a couple of pictures of just where the linkages are, um, what holes that they're in, if there's any clips holding you know holding it in, to, in place. Just to get a, you know, once you have this carburetor all tooled apart and in a hundred pieces laying on your on your uh, table here, sometimes it can get overwhelming. Um, this carburetor's rather simple. Some of the uh, other quad jets um, with the different uh, electric chokes and stuff on them like that, there's a lot more linkages on here. This one's pretty simple. The chokes run by uh, a spring on the intake manifold and uh, you know heating and contraction of the spring actually open and closes the choke. Um, so I just I just like to start by taking a couple pictures of the carburetor, just, just the linkages. So I just get a, a you know a digital note of where everything goes or uh, you know getting a, a an image of where all the linkages are is I like to take these um, these are actually your idle air adjusting uh, needles right here so I'll take these and I'll, I'll actually turn them in count the number of turns that I turned them in and then uh, you know write that down and then when I go to put it back together you know I'll run it in the whole way count how many turns it is and then I'll know when I'm putting the uh, carburetor back together, um, just where they're sitting at. The you know the boat seems to idle and run pretty good right now where it's at. Um, the last one I did, someone had already taken the needles out, so I didn't have uh, you know the the correct adjustment that it came with. But the instructions say to turn it in you know the whole way and then run it out about three to four turns. I actually had really good luck by just you know running it out three and a half turns. Um, there's a, there's two of them, one on each side of the carburetor. So I had really good luck, three and a half turns. Um, I put it on. And, you know, the only thing I had to do was adjust the uh, idle a little bit with uh, with the idle screw right here, and I just had the idle set a little bit too high. So I got pretty lucky with that. But this car this carb seems to be running good where it's at. So, like I said, I'm going to run these in, count the number of turns, and I'm going to put it back uh, right where it was. Uh, you may notice a a hole right here that's right above um, the fuel filter on the carb. This was actually a uh, 
it was a fitting where the hose, there's a clear hose that goes from this fitting down to the uh, diaphragm of the fuel pump. Um, it just, you know, just holds a vacuum on there. If you ever, uh, you know, see any uh, fuel in that clear tubing that goes down to the fuel pump, that means your diaphragm is ruptured and uh, you need to uh, change your fuel pump right away. But I just um, took this off on the boat because I couldn't get a uh, wrench on, you know, my fuel filter housing there with uh it was it was getting in the way so I just took that off and, and left it in the boat so I'm just showing you that you know there's a giant hole in my carburetor it's it's actually supposed to be there so just wanted to uh, let you know about that okay so the first thing I did is I went ahead and took off the uh, housing for the fuel filter and uh, you know looking at the fuel filter is going to give me a pretty good indication on you know what's going on inside there uh, what I got to look forward to, so we'll go ahead and remove the fuel filter out of here and see what we got. And it sounds pretty crunchy already. So you can see there that the fuel filter is doing its job and it's pretty dirty. Uh, the, the rebuild kit does come with a new fuel filter. It's not the best one in the world. Um, it's kind of soft. I'll show you when we uh, go to put it in. But as you can see, the uh, fuel filter has got some contaminants in it and uh, so I'm sure we'll find some more of this stuff but it is doing its job okay so I started this assembly here and the first thing I did was uh, I went ahead and and counted these they were both in two turns exactly two turns so I went ahead and loosened them up and uh, you can see that uh, they're not too bad, the needles aren't looking too bad, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, clean these up. And this is the uh, little parts cage where my, uh, my carburetor dip came out of. Okay, and you can, you can see on the, uh, the needle that, you know, there, it's, it's a little discolored, and, but we'll go ahead and clean that up. We'll uh, go into the, that soak. Um, I will add that I am doing this in my in my house. I, I emptied out all the gasoline and, and sprayed it with some carburetor cleaner to get the smell out of it. Um, I actually got this idea off the internet. I'm using one of her old, uh, my girlfriend's old cookie sheets. Just so if any small parts uh, happen to fall off, it doesn't roll off to the table. And uh, if anything comes out of there, it's all caught in this cookie sheet. I just uh, found an old rag and, and put it down on the cookie sheet. Um, another thing that's that's pretty helpful is to find a piece of 2x4. Um, you'll notice that uh, the carburetor won't lay flat on a flat surface with the linkages and stuff on it. So I just uh, put it on a 2x4. It's a pretty good stand to hold the carburetor still while you're working on it and disassembly and assembling it. 